Hi, I'm a Haven Minchin, CEO of Helium One. I'm, I believe I'm the last presentation bef before lunch, so I'll uh, try and keep it brief. Um, helium One uh, has uh, the, the largest undiscovered helium resource in the world. It's got potential to be a game changer in a high-tech, high-value high commodity, which c cannot be substituted in a number of high-value man man manufacturing situations. Uh, we have a significantly de-risk de basin, which I'm delighted to say we are coming back to drill in Q3 this year, uh, with a, a razor-sharp focus on, maintain, on making a discovery and confirming the, the helium shows which we identified last, last, last year are economic accumulations. Uh, a, a lot of people don't know much about helium. Uh, I mean, other than squeaky voice balloons, what's, what, 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 what's it actually used for? Why are we even bothering? Why are we excited about this? Well, the answer is that helium is used in a variety of high-value, high-tech ap applications. Uh, it's, it's unsubstitutable in a number of uh, different in, in, in industrial usage. Uh, it's chief use at the moment, about 20% of it goes into, into, into medical, where it's used in MRI scanners and, uh, and assisted breathing. It's got key growth sectors in, in the man high tech manufacturing, uh, semiconductor chip manufacturing, fiber, fiber optic manufacturing. It's used in uh, data storage in the, in the cloud. Uh, it's used in space exploration, nuclear fusion, and uh, uh, future demand from things like nuclear fusion are going to change the way that helium is perceived in this world. The supply side is looking very grim. Uh, by 2030, 25% of global demand was going to come out of Russia. That's now off the table, leaving a shortfall of 2 billion cubic feet. Uh, this means that basically anyone who has helium needs helium. You know, there's uh, a critical short, shortage in the, in the market, and because it can't be substituted in the high value applications which it's used in, uh, the, 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 the demand is there and the price will, will, will be paid. Uh, speaking of price, it's been growing on a long term trend of 8% CAGR. Um, there's a very interesting event uh, which occurred uh, sort of the beginning of 2020, which is where we saw a, a decoupling of uh, short-term prices from, from long-term contract pricing. Um, we, we use um, China as a window into a very opaque market. China's got no domestic helium and imports a billion cubic feet a year. Uh, spot prices for short-term contracts out of the United States were normally uh, a few dollars per MCF less than long-term contracts because security of supply was more important than immediate sub sub supply. From the beginning of 2020 onwards, you see a decoupling of the spots here, the short-term contract pricing from long-term contract pricing because helium was required at any price. To be honest, if you're if you've got a billion dollar plant producing a, a, a million semiconductor chip un, u, units, it's cheaper to pay $1,000 per MCF of helium gas than it is to close your plant down for a, for a day. It can't be substituted, so the price is paid. This critical shortage is where Helium One comes into the picture. We are a primary helium producer, by which I mean we're not associated with hydrocarbon. We're exploring for helium uh, at a high grade, uh, eight to 10% uh, measured up its surface, which is between 50 and 200 times higher grade than anything currently in production. Uh, we got we had first, first move for advantage back in 2016. We secured 4,500 square kilometers of licenses in, um, in t -t -t Tanzania, uh, which is probably the most prospective land in the world. Uh, it, uh, it's the unique geology of t -t -t Tanzania, which contributes to the quality of these projects. Uh, helium's formed over billions of years through the breakdown of uh, naturally occurring radio radioactive isotopes in the continental crust. It gets released when that crust is broken open for the very first time, which is what's happening in the East African Rift, Rift, Rift Valley. We've secured all the areas where there is measured helium seeps at surface adjacent to sediment-filled basins. The sediment-filled basins have the potential for reservoir trap and seal, which allow economic accumulations to develop and to be ex ex exploited. 
Uh, we have had some very positive results from our 2021 drilling camp campaign, uh, identifying seal, 130 meter thick seal in clay units at the top of the crew form, form formation, identifying excellent quality reservoir, and identifying multiple helium shows from basement all the way up to, up to, up to surface. For the first time ever, we were able to have indications of subsurface helium, primary helium on the African continent. Um, in fact, I'm delighted to say that uh, we announced this, this morning that the Thai prospect that we drilled last year, we are returning to drill that this, this year as our primary target. Why? Because it is significantly de-risked. It's the lowest risk prospect in our port portfolio. We're maintaining a razor sharp focus on discovery. This is the key that can unlock the entire Helium province and 2022 is going to be our discovery year. Uh, we have built a subsurface date database, um, all of which has developed a very strong predictive tool for identifying pros pro leads and prospects. And from, from that, the tie is the one we're going back, back to. We uh, have a rig I'd, I'd identified in the East Africa re region. It's a 100 ton mask rig, rig capable of drilling an eight and a half inch hole all the, all the way to basement, which will give us the maximum opportunity to produce a good quality hole for us to do tests and to make our discovery. Uh, and all in all, it's building up to be a very exciting year for us. Um, in the event of a, disc, in the event of a disc, disc discovery, uh, the, the next steps are relatively simple. The, the biggest risk remaining on the project is to make the discovery. Uh, af after that, it's pretty plain, plain such hailing. Uh, we've done a top level scoping study on, um, on um, modular processing plant. It's a very simple bi bimodal gas. Uh, you, you're using pressure swing absorption to separate helium from nitrogen. The nitrogen we can vent into the atmosphere. There are zero greenhouse gases associated with this project. Uh, the capital cost on that plant would be about $50 million to produce 350,000 MCF a year uh, at an OPEX of $20 an MCF and a price of $350 per MCF. You're looking at a, at a cash of about $120 million a year. So it's a very low cost, high margin op operation. They're very suitable to debt finance and for module one, you can self-finance module two and module three until you're producing a billion cubic feet a year and you're a strategic player in a supply constrained market. I say strategic player because unlike the byproduct producers currently in operation, we're able to, we will be able to adjust our production to meet supply short shortages or demand spikes. So we will be able to provide that contingency for the security of supply, which so many end users desperately need. Uh, and that's more or less it. Uh, I've, I've, I'm in booth D17 if you have any questions, uh, but I believe it's lunchtime, so I should probably keep it trim and short and always leave them wanting more. Uh, thank you very much.